Hello, David Healy here with you once again. Welcome to the third lesson in this contact scripting tutorial series. If you've seen the first two lessons, you should now be pretty familiar with the basic uh, techniques of contact scripting and have a general overview of the more generic programming practices, principles and conventions. And I hope you've been able to apply some of the techniques we've used in your uh, own projects. In this lesson, we're going to move on to more advanced concepts. We'll be covering a lot of new ground and we'll also be reusing and repurposing most of the stuff we've already covered. So some new stuff, some familiar stuff. So it should be a nice balance. If you haven't seen the first two lessons, it doesn't matter, but you will need to have a good understanding of the basics to be able to proceed with this lesson because the things I'm going to talk about are more advanced and I'm not going to, although we will be covering some of the basics again in that we'll be reusing them I won't be going into the same detail I did throughout the first two lessons I'll just be um, sort of skimming over over the things I expect you to already be familiar with the goal of this lesson is to create a simplified version of an instrument that you would typically develop for commercial purposes so whereas in the last two lessons they were more sort of just for exercise really, getting used to the scripting language. This is more of a real world example, something that could potentially be a professional commercial product. We're gonna build a, a violin sample library uh, with a full GUI using purpose-made graphics. And I'm gonna show you how to build a true legato script that you'll be able to reuse and adapt in your own project. And we're gonna look at a couple of um, a couple of ways true legato is done we're going to discuss them we're also going to create a simulated round robin repetition system and i'm going to show you ways of making dynamic crossfades so um not just for dynamics you could use it for switching between articulations and things like that so all that to come in this video in order to put this instrument together, we'll be making use of some of the extended language features provided by Niels Liebag's Contact Script Editor. Now, if you saw Lesson 2, I went through these editors just briefly. We had a look at them to see what options were available. And throughout Lesson 2, I was using the Sublime Text 3 plugin version of that editor. Now, you'll need one of these editors to continue with this lesson. Hopefully, you've already got one of those. But if you haven't, there's links on your screen now where you can download um, Niels's editor, either from his website or um, there's a, a link that I put on the VI Control Forum. So depending on when you're watching this, that link will still be there. Um, and from there, you can download the Sublime Text 3 version, which I recommend. I think it's the better version. Um, you will need one of these editors to proceed because they provide a language extension to contact um, it all, we, we put it into the contact script editor inside contact in the end, but um, we, we can use Niels's editor in order to kind of take shortcuts, so we'll write less code. So that's, that's why we're going to use that. It's, um, it can save us time. Through this lesson, we're going to cover a lot of different topics, starting with a look at how graphics can be designed for use in contact, some of the design decisions and considerations that you'll need to take into account when building your GUIs, whether you're script, uh, creating the graphics yourself or working with a designer, and how we can implement those graphics in contact. After that, we'll move on and get stuck into the scripting and we'll go over how to create more advanced functions. We touched on functions briefly in lesson two. Um, we're going to look at how to perform different types of dynamic crossfade, as well as learning some new techniques that are provided by the extended language in the uh, contact script editor. We'll build small exercise scripts as we cover these new topics so that you become familiar with them because I don't want to overwhelm you. So it'll be similar to in the first lesson when we were learning new things. We're going to do um, bite-sized chunks. And then we'll put them into context in our main instrument script. So on the screen now is the finished instrument that we're going to create. It's called the Acme Fiddle and it's a violin. And we've got these nice um, knobs for, uh, that's for the reverb and we've got these switches. We've also, I don't know if you saw that, but we've got this thing, if we switch between these two, 
we'll talk about that later but the legato and round robin have certain um, requirements where you can't have them both on at the same time so you can see these switches automatically flick which is um which is something interesting that we're going to look at how to script we've got this drop down menu for changing the cc which controls dynamics and we've got this text here which is actually dynamic uh, this is for the key switches so you can see you can switch between staccato and sustain and if i put the legato on and hit the staccato key switch you can see legato flicks off because we don't have um, staccato legato so i'll put the legato on you can have a listen to that Not the smoothest legato. The reason for that is I was lazy when cutting the interval samples. But we'll look at how we can possibly improve that later on inside contact. And um, changing these settings over here, these are for the legato. We can change these and that will also improve the legato effect. And we've got the round robin, this is a simulated round robin. And I've got a free video on YouTube you may have seen where I show a technique for making a simulated round robin. This is a different method, this is going to be done via scripting. Um, so another technique to add to your toolbox. And we're going to look at how to add the reverb as well of course. And if you saw lesson 2 you remember we had things like this where we just had arbitrary values. But over here with the reverb, you can see we've actually got a decibel reading. So we're going to look at how we can pull that out of contact as well.